this is one of those uh, cute little things where Donald Trump uh, just. Um, <laughs> I mean, we just live in an in a an era where there are really two major, um, I guess, streams of reality, and one of them is Donald Trump and his forty percent, and then it's the rest of the country. We don't necessarily agree on everything in that other sixty percent of the country, but we have some basic understandings of reality, like. Thailand is pronounced Thailand, not Thailand. <laughs> and that Donald Trump, in fact, had Barack Obama been president during a pandemic when 160,000 people died. I think it's quite obvious Donald Trump would have called for his resignation. But Donald Trump just can't admit that. If 160,000 people had died on President Obama's watch, do, do you think you would have called for his resignation? No, I wouldn't have done that. I think it's, uh, uh, I think it's been amazing what we've been able to do. If we didn't close up our country, we would have had one and a half or two million people already dead. Uh, we've called it right. Now we don't have to close it. We understand the disease. Nobody understood it because nobody's ever seen anything like this. The closest thing is uh, in 1917, they say, right? The, the, great, the great pandemic uh, certainly was a terrible thing where they lost anywhere from 50 to 100 million people. Probably ended the Second World War. All the soldiers were sick. Uh, it was a that was a uh, terrible situation. And this is highly contagious. This wait, wait, one is highly, highly contagious. Wait, 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 wait. First off, first off, of course, he would have called for his resignation. Put up the tweets. Let's just get that out of the way before we start talking about the sort of some, some of the problematic history that's going on here. Now, again, of course, people make mistakes all the time. Here he is, uh, Donald Trump, back in October 15th, 2014. President Obama has a personally visit to embrace all people in the U.S. who contract Ebola. Um, I guess he was being a little facetious about that. But uh, he talks about if this doctor who so recklessly flew into New York from West Africa has Ebola, then Obama should apologize to the American people. Who resigned. So even if a doctor, a single person, was in America with Ebola, uh, Obama should resign. Never mind 160,000 nice. dying. But can we go back now and look at Donald Trump's recounting of the 1918 pandemic, which did not end World War or two. One or two or two for that matter. No, in fact, it did not. In fact, in fact, the pandemic may have caused World War Two. Insofar as that uh, Woodrow Wilson. Well, we'll talk more about that in a second. But Woodrow Wilson reportedly had the Spanish flu, which incidentally started in, I think, Kansas. It just so happened that uh, they recognized it first in Spain. Was Wilson it on a base it. in Kansas, too, or am I misremembering that? I don't know. It's possible. Yeah, that's what I remember. It was a lot of the soldiers were transacting it. Donald Trump's grandfather died of the Spanish flu, or great-grandfather. Maybe they just kept saying 1917 to him when he was a kid. <laughs> but Wilson had it. It had neurological implications because it would drive you a little bit crazy. Wilson went in with, I think it was a 14-point plan, to make sure that um, the losers in World War I were not, what's the word, overly punished, were, you know, so that there would not create resentments and maybe spur a second world war 10, 15, 20 years later. And, um, and however, he got none of those 14 points because, and many people suggest, because he was just incapable of doing anything because he was such a mess from having the flu. But nevertheless, let's go back to Donald Trump. Um, I think maybe so, he must have been rattled by that question to, to get, like, I mean, the 1917 thing, for whatever reason, he's insistent upon, that's when it was. But the World War II thing, it just seems like he's maybe a little rattled it because nobody's ever seen anything like this. The closest thing is uh, in 1917, they say, right? The, the, great, no, the great pandemic uh, certainly was a terrible thing where they lost anywhere from 50 to 100 million people. 
probably ended the Second World War. All the soldiers were sick. Yeah. Uh, it was a, it was a uh, terrible situation. And this is highly contagious. This one is highly, highly contagious. Now, if I would have uh, listened to a lot of people, we would have kept it open. And by the way, we keep it open now, all the way. We keep it open. But we would have kept it open, and you could be up to a million and a half or two million people right now. One and a half to two million people. Uh, our people have done a fantastic job. Our consultants and our doctors, you know. And mm. uh, okay. Our consultants? Um, it's, not, it's not impossible to imagine that we could get, I mean, we could have hundreds of thousands more people die uh, from this in this country mm-hmm. at this point. It's still not, I mean. The um, country's banned us. We, our borders closed, but really it was protection to the rest of the world. Indeed. Indeed. Um, wow. There's Donald Trump. Let's just check in with Donald Trump one more time. They're having a lot of problem trying to find something stick to Joe Biden. And I mean, I think they're hoping, I don't know. I think they probably are hoping that, uh, the, that it's Susan Rice on some level, uh, because they want to talk about Benghazi or, uh, Obamagate. But mm-hmm. I, I just, I actually think that, you know, they might get more, uh, hay out of like a Kamala Harris on some level because they could actually take Kamala Harris's record as a prosecutor and try and um, suppress some votes in, you know, places like Wisconsin, like in uh, Milwaukee and in Detroit, where they did against uh, Clinton. I don't think they'll they'll have as much success. And if Kanye's running there and Kanye could just be going and spent, I mean, if Kanye just camped out in Wisconsin for a week and just talked about how Kamala Harris, um, you know, as a prosecutor, I, I, I mean, I could see that, uh, suppressing some of the vote in don't in, give them ideas. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I don't think if they, I am, they've already filed in uh, Wisconsin yeah, with yeah. Uh, Kanye, so it's, I think well, they, they. I mean, she's they're going to weaponize her, but there's another aspect as well that we can have to take into serious consideration. You know, she's been a prominent. The Republican Party has this obsession with, um, you know, vilifying certain outspoken women, whether progressive or not on Fox News all day long, and she's had a little bit of a runway on that. Uh, Unlike, you know, I don't think Susan Rice has had the same type. So there's going to be, like, real sexism in a way that there was with Hillary, and I think they're trying to disrupt, like, sliver by sliver, you know, pulling back the Trump voters that may have gone for Obama a few years ago that could possibly move back to to Joe Biden. And I think a lot of them are, like, frankly, they hated Hillary, and they were a little sexist, and they watch Fox News, and they might think that joe biden is is a little bit saner but kamala harris i think would be dangerous if that's their strategy i mean i think that's going to be a problem with any any um woman that he woman. nominates to some extent uh, but there's but, not as much of a runway to build that up well susan you know rice I mean? there is isn't there yeah i don't know is it is it sexist though is it like uh, i think she i don't know i think it's it's benghazi yes foreign policy yes but has she been like vilified the way that kamala harris has yeah, I know what you're saying. You know what I mean? Uh, like the, the well, sexist tropes, sort of. I think that's probably not... Uh, I mean, they're going to do that either way. But um, who knows? But as Trump is flailing around before the VP pick, and I don't think, frankly, that uh, Trump's uh, focusing in on the VP pick, my guess would be it's not going to have any salience. But like I say, there's a, one never knows. So he's been flailing around a little bit, and... The, the latest is, uh, you know, he's still trying to justify how Joe Biden, who is both sleepy and um, low energy and incoherent, is going to actually hurt God. Well, here's how he's going to do it. Uh, Joe Biden has hurt God. He's against God. Um, the vice president has said that he's a man of deep Catholic faith, that he's credited for helping him endure some immense personal tragedy. So, so what did you mean by that when you say that Joe Biden has hurt God or is against God? Well, if you look at the manifesto that, uh, that they've come up with and if you look at their stance on uh, religion and things having to do very importantly with uh, aspects of religion and faith, uh, I don't think a man of uh, deep religion would be agreeing to the Bernie Sanders plan. You take a look at what they have in, and you just, uh, you can't put that into uh, the realm of a religious group of people, I will say that. 
And I think it's one of the reasons why, if you look at polls, which I'm not a big believer in polls, I wouldn't if I was, I guess I wouldn't be standing here right now. Uh, and by the way, our poll numbers are going up very rapidly, as you know, and Joe's are going down very rapidly. Um, he'll have to come out of the basement, it looks like, pretty soon, because that, uh, you know, it's one of those things. But no, if you look at uh, the manifesto, I call it the manifesto. A lot of people are calling it the manifesto. My opinion, it's further no, left what? than where Bernie was before. So <laughs> normally he'd be left and he'd bring it somewhere a little bit toward the center. But uh, some of the He's things so that they have down there, and I'm not only talking in terms of religion, I'm not talking even in terms of religion, but some of the things they have in the agreement made, and this was an agreement made by Bernie Sanders and Joe, uh, it's a terrible thing. It would be a terrible thing for our country. It will destroy our country. Uh, we will go into a depression. We will put on regulation. We will double and triple taxes. We will, it will be terrible for health care, just terrible. You'll have 180 million people lose their health care. It will be a terrible, terrible thing for our country. Okay. The manifesto. Is he talking about the Democratic platform? platform. I don't understand. The, it was like yeah. he couldn't he couldn't access the word platform, so he pretended that no, people, he's, some people call he's it a manifesto. Communist. He's just he just wants to label us all as communists. It's oh, red scare shit. I disagree. I disagree with Nomi. The platform actually means a whole lot. <laughs> Nomi's wrong. <laughs> It's a manifesto. It's a piece of paper, okay? <laughs> every single thing they're going to implement. And one of them is God is dead. That's going to be the manifesto. God is dead. And uh, it's one of the things people are saying that My God only is manifesto dead. manifesto is the Bible. I mean, he, I, like, none of this stuff, I mean, none of this stuff resonates. Uh, like, like, even like, like, I'm not a fan of Joe Biden, but. The guy goes around and does this every five minutes, right? Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Like yeah. we used to, that used to be the one way you do an impression of that guy throughout the entire <laughs> campaign was him, you know, uh, telling everybody he's Catholic. Catholic yeah. I mean, that's the, they, they cannot, and that's why he had to sort of like pivot, I feel like, because he doesn't, there's no, they give him like, throwing like everything against the is. wall. They're like, okay. Trump, this, these are the demos that we have to work on. These are the hit, these are the attacks we need to make. And so every time he gets up, he just has like one line for the Christ, for the evangelicals to make sure that they're excited. You know, one line to paint him as a communist, one line to say sleepy Joe sleeping in a basement. It's like word, he just has a, a word salad and he needs to go in and hit all those points every single time he's up there. That's it. It's I don't, believe in, in I don't believe in polls, but <laughs> it looks like we're doing better in polls. So, yeah, and I'm going to use the Joe Biden talking point about uh, Medicare for all to, you know, hit on Biden and his non-endorsement of Medicare for all. Uh, I, I mean, lose it's. Um, all right, let's play one more clip, then we'll uh, we'll take a uh, phone call or two. And, uh, and I am this is uh, Tucker Carlson. Now, understand what's going on in cities across the country. There is. A, a decent amount of flight from cities that is taking place right now across the country. Suburbs, uh, the value of real estate in suburbs is shooting up a little bit. People are getting out of the city um, because it's easier to live in a pandemic, not in a city. Brooklyn, as soon as I walk out of my apartment, got to put a mask on to go through the hallway, down the elevator, down the stairs, then out on the street, you got to wear a mask. You go into any place, you got to wear a mask. <clears throat> You're in the suburbs. You go out, you sit out, uh, on your, uh, at your barbecue, no, no mask. Walk outside, get the paper, let the dog take a poop, no mask, whatever it is that you do. I don't know. 